Welcome to the video. So today I'm at Cotswold BMW and the last time I was here I actually filmed an M440i. Now I was only allowed to kind of just do a little walk around, I couldn't drive it, it was like a demo car, um, it was Covid, there was a load of problems going on and, and I was very very thankful to just kind of film it but I couldn't drive it. This time and very much big thank you to Tom Kemp at Cotswold BMW, he's handed me the keys their brand new M4 competition. So today, I'm gonna to be driving this. I'm actually gonna have some time with it. Um, I feel like the M2, no, 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 I feel like the M4 driving impressions, there's loads of videos out there, it's been done to death. But for me, and, and why you guys kind of follow the channel is because of my M2. So, I've got about three years left on my PCP on my M2. Um, these are 85K brand new when you kind of add a few options. And for me, in about three years time, I'm probably gonna have a dog, maybe kids. You know, life is gonna have changed quite a lot. So for me, and today's video that I'm gonna be focusing on is in three years time, am I gonna swap out and get an M3 or an M4? These are probably gonna be about 50K maybe, I think in about three years time, a used one, perfectly in the price bracket of this M2. So I'm easily gonna be able to afford one. So today's video is basically me trying to find out if this is a good next step from my M2. Equally, um, the, M the M2 is probably gonna be very, very similar to this M4. You're probably gonna get the carbon bucket seats, maybe the same grill, who knows? Um, maybe even the ZF gearbox. So a lot of the stuff I'm gonna find out today is also gonna help me whether decide, whether decide whether I'm gonna want the new M2 as well. So everything, I, I, I was here a couple days ago um, to come see the M3, M4. I deliberately didn't post any of my first impressions on my Instagram story, you can follow me here, plug, 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 um, because I wanted to kind of give all of my first impressions to you guys on camera. So I haven't driven it before, um, Tom has kindly parked this here for me to do the thumbnail. Everything is going to be my first experience. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, I've never driven an M car before other than my M2. I've been in an M4, obviously, you can see the video up here, but I've never driven another M car. So this is going to be very, very interesting for me. I'm interested to see what the handling is going to be like. Come over. Um, obviously, this is the S58 engine, so it's kind of the M division version of the B58 engine that was in my M140i. So I'm also very interested to see how this kind of is compares to my M140 as well. It's gonna be you know, almost same engine, S58, B58 for my M140. And we've got the ZF gearbox as well, which is also in my M140. So I'm very, very interested to see how this um, reacts and how, how I find this one versus an S58, uh, S55 F series F87 uh, M2. Yeah, we get to go. Okay, quick one before we fit, before we go out for a drive. I want to do a rev battle now. I am on the uh, on the Cotswold uh, dealership car park. I'm not going to sit here and rum, 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 just revving it. Um, we're going to be very polite, very conservative. This is like a test drive, so this isn't my car. I don't want to be going ham, um, but. Obviously there's OPFs now. There's also OPFs in my M2. There's OPFs built in. You know, there was more R&D, more time to go into this car. Um, so I want to see how this sounds versus my M2. So mine's completely stock. I haven't done anything to it. So it's gonna be a good comparison. S55, S58, let's go. I'm gonna put it in Sport Plus and do a startup, okay? has that S55-esque startup. Nice little pop, sport plus startup. Again, I'll have to wait for this one to finish its cold start. Not too bad, few burbles. It's probably gonna be very different to this one though. 
I feel like the cracks on this and the burble is going to be a lot crisper. Yeah, this is this sounds better. It's more crisp. Even I thought this was bad. <laughs> That's a little bit worse, but it still sounds good. It's 2021. Nothing a PCW or an AA midpipe or a Remus, nothing can't, that that can't fix. I'm going to switch between Efficient Sport and Sport Plus. Listen to the valves. It will change the tone of the car. It's quite interesting. Okay, so this is going from Sport Plus to Efficient. Did you hear the valves? This is going from Efficient to Sport. And then one more Sport to Sport Plus. Just kind of here it's a little bit deeper anyway now we'll go for a drive first impressions let's go all right we've got one camera there one camp camera here getting into these carbon bucket seats let's see uh, so you kind of have to fall in there is a knack to it um, I hope this GoPro doesn't fall off at some point they really hug you in on the, on the legs and the, the sides I feel really planted they look absolutely gorgeous. It's a six and a half grand option, which is ridiculous for the carbon pack, but I feel like it's a must. They look absolutely gorgeous, and um, the, the carbon just, it, if, for me, if I were buying, it, when, when I come to buy this car, or when I do buy this car, I think I want the carbon bucket seats. They, they are comfortable. I can happily sit on this in the motorway. Uh, we'll, we'll find out as I'm driving around, but for so far, first impressions, they're really comfortable. Right, start up, let's go. Okay, foot on the brake. We'll do it in Sport Plus, see what it sounds like. Good sound. Uh, gearbox here, very used to it. We've now got a park button. Got a park button now, ZF gearbox, obviously, I'm very um, used to this. Let's whack the AC on, reverse. Let's go for a spin. Already. The steering on this is so light. Very different um, first impression from when I drove the M2 for the very first time. I felt like it was really raw. It felt like the steering was really heavy, really stiff, coming from an M140 naturally. Maybe I'm accustomed to the M2 a little bit, but this feels, this is comfort steering, I've got it in. It feels very comfortable. Sport Plus right now. Oh, traffic. Well, brakes work. So I'm just wafting around at the moment. Sport Plus, but everything else is comfort. What's my gear, gear ratio? Gear ratio one. It's very comfortable to drive, honestly. It doesn't really feel that big either. When I was in the M4, that felt quite big. I could feel like all the weight behind me, but this actually feels really nimble. Obviously, it, it does feel like there's, there's more metal, the shorter wheelbase in the M2. It's that nimble car that everyone loves. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed so far. Oh, a few little pops. feels a little bit slower I'm kind of shifting the same way the same uh, speed as what I would do on my M2 and I'm quite often hitting the limiter hit on this so it's almost like I need to shift a bit earlier than I normally do on my M2 that's gonna be the gearbox I keep hitting the limiter which is a little bit annoying the steering the directness it feels more comfortable it doesn't feel hard work to turn the wheel. So it feels more like a quick car, a quick wafter. But a very capable car. Easy manoeuvring. 
just feels like I've owned this car for years. Paddles feel really nice, there's a nut nice rubber feeling. Not the easiest seats to get out of. Um, I think if I was jumping in and out of Tesco or the petrol station, it would be a little bit annoying. Still get the seats though. I just want to show you them anyway, look. Look at them! Look how nice they are. Look at that and you can stick your fingers through. I don't know, these seats are worth it's just worth the effort of getting in and out of the car park. Um, I close that and it goes back. Hey, look at that. Electric seats. Um, let's have a look, little look at the engine. S58. Tell you what, it's either the color or it's a brand new M4, but it's getting a lot of attraction. A lot of people are looking at it. Big motor, it's trying to cool itself down, because obviously we've been hooning up and down. I miss not having the strut brace, the carbon strut brace, that's quite nice. They could have made this carbon, that would have been a nice little touch. Attention! <laughs> I'm filming the new M4 comp today. Tell you what, it is lovely. Look at the rig setup we got here, and it's getting some attention in this Sao Paulo yellow. <laughs> it's very nice. Got these lads here. It's a different kind of angry though, it's with the M2 you can feel the engine almost pulling you by the scruff of the neck. This, this is a different kind of pull. It feels angry, it feels quick, but I feel like the M2 is maybe a bit angrier. It's interesting though, it's fast, it's, it's, it's very capable. What are we looking at, like five, 500 horsepower? I think it's 650 newton meters of torque. That's a good 100 newton meters more than mine. I mean, I'll be honest, all of this dash is really nice. It's, it feels really cozy, the carbon's really nice. It's all a nice little extra touch on top of you know, the, the digital dial on top of my, N, my, my M2. But at the end of the day, for me, as a driver, I'm all about how the car feels when I drive. I know for a lot of other customers, it's more about the, the dash, the interior, how nice that is, and that's fair enough. Um, but as I've grown and gotten older, and my taste kind of has changed, I care more about the engine and how the car feels to drive, how much fun I get out of it. Um, I guess that's the difference between a, a car enthusiast versus just a, a normal person who just wants a nice car. But it's a nice added touch. The paddles are a lot longer though, which is quite nice. I can kind of shift with my hands down at the bottom of the steering wheel, whereas normally I have to kind of have, have my hands right in the middle, like uh, three and nine o'clock. seats though because it kind of hugs you so much it feels like you're in a fixed position yeah. all the time yeah you've got handles next to your thighs yeah so, so it's like you just hold it if you're you yeah know. so you feel like you can't slouch no it's comfortable I can fall asleep in it it is comfortable but at the same time you feel like you're fixed all the time yeah and you can't slouch I'd still have these over the normal seats yeah. Look how gorgeous they are, they're just gorgeous. The size of the car also feels very comfortable. Um, I don't feel like I know where everything is, I'm not gonna hit any curbs. It feels very easy, like I've owned this car for years. There obviously feels like there's a lot more metal behind me. Not as much as the, F um, the F80, 
um, the M4 that I was in, that felt very long and boaty at the back. This kind of doesn't. It's quite interesting. It still doesn't feel as nimble as the M2 and small, but it still feels very capable. Yeah, I just feel right at home in this. It doesn't feel any different. It doesn't feel, when I drove the M2 for the first time, it felt alien to me. It felt really different. This just feels like I've had it for ages. It's just comfortable. Maybe that's just M car heritage, M car DNA being transferred over to the M4. Or maybe it's a bit more comfortable than the M2. pushing this on the, some country roads this grips and the power comes in so well it's definitely got that M car DNA it's still there it might be more of a comfortable daily driver but that it's still like my M2 it's there. <laughs> what a hoon this is. My, 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 M1, uh, my M140, really capable, really good daily car, you can just drive it around everywhere, and then when you wanna put your foot down and wanna have some fun, it's there. And I think this is what the M4 is like, the M3, M4, the G, the G series. It's capable for when you need it to be, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it's very comfortable. sound bad doesn't sound bad at all nothing a PCW can't fix to make it a little bit louder but it actually sounds all right it doesn't encourage you to oversteer as much maybe it's because I've got the traction on or I've, I've kind of gone MD, MDM and I'm treating it with respect but in my car, it, the back end is always wanting to come out. <laughs> Tell you what, because of the weight of the car, e even though it pulls really fast and it's like 500 horsepower, speed kind of feels the same. I don't know if maybe I'm just like, I've been uh, spoiled a little bit, but speed is about the same. I think the only time I've ever been in another car and gone, oh, this is quicker than the M2, was the McLaren 570S. It's fast, it definitely goes a lot quicker, like you're going up, getting there quicker. It's definitely quicker, um, but that sense, that, 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 scared, that scared feeling, it's kind of about the same. Um, 
I think you're just gonna have to go supercar, performance car, to really get that kind of next level thrill. I think I've hit a certain threshold of thrill, and it's all about the same now. I'm just spoiled, basically. So, I've only got about just over a quarter of a tank of fuel left. <laughs> um, Tom, I've, I, I'm pretty sure he told me he filled it up to full. Um, I've only been hooning around for about an hour. Either my driving, I've just been keeping it in high revs or something all the time, or it's really bad MPG. Um, you would expect from a seven speed ZF gearbox, you would, uh, an eight speed ZF gearbox, you would have better MPG. I think that's better when you're on the motorway, you got the extra gear, you can come down on the revs. But this drinks a lot of fuel. Um, I, I can't work my way out around all of the uh, the dash systems. Let me, go on, give, give, give me a second, let me find the MPG of the car. There you go, right, so uh, the average MPG on this is 25 miles per gallon, which is actually the same as my M2. So maybe it's just because I've been hooning it a lot. Um, but I've only, I'm pretty sure he told me he filled it up to full. I'll double check with him later. If he didn't, I'll, I'll pull an overlay here and um, write it down. But otherwise, uh, it's it's pretty bad MPG if you're, if you're out for a spin on this. Let's have a little talk about the looks. Everyone loves to talk about the looks. In person, this is way better than it looks in, in photos. Interestingly enough, the M3 and the M4, the 3, I think, was the car that I, I, I would like to buy because it's, it's got more of a boxy back end. But it's got some weird parts on the car that, that I, I'm not quite sure about. Because the windshield or the windscreen on the M3 sits a lot higher versus the 4, it makes the front of the three look like it's just stuck on. It's really, really odd. Whereas the four feels like it has all these sleeker lines. It looks sportier. It looks more like it's ready to pounce. Um, it looks lower at the front. Um, arguably, the uh, it needs some springs or coilovers or something because the arch gap on the front is horrendous. Um, but I think the four looks better than the three. The four is certainly more sporty looking than the three. The three's got those boxier wide hips though. Um, but I, 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 I would still buy the three just because I like the four door. Um, I like the boxy back end. But I think the four has more kind of sleeker lines. Um, grill, perfectly fine. Honestly, wouldn't even worry about it. it. It looks great in person. Doesn't even look like it's ugly. It doesn't look like rabbit teeth. Honestly, I, I, it, it, it wouldn't put me off buying one. Looks fine. There's so much traffic. It doesn't look that bad, okay? When you see it in person, it looks really, really good. Uh, another thing about the carbon pack, Ooh. carbon mirrors, mirror caps, and then you've got this CS style boot lid. I don't know what they're going to do when the actual CS M4 comes out. Um, maybe make a more aggressive one. And then you've got a more aggressive carbon rear diffuser. Let's have a look at the back if there's an ugly muffler. Hey, there kind of is. Um, but because of the diffuser, you can't really see it that much. The tips are a lot bigger than mine. Um, obviously, we could do the same with what I've done with my M2. Take these black ones off and you could put carbon... Um, uh, tips on. Other than that, it looks really nice, especially with this sunny weather. It looks really, really good. I'm going to get, get some photos now for Instagram. We're going to do a few more up and down drives, and then we're going to send the car back. Oh yeah! So take my foot off the brake. It creeps. Forgot about that. ZF gearbox, PCT doesn't creep. Take your foot off the brake. It just stays there. Sick! What? That was the uh, the emergency brake oh, okay. uh, automatic braking system thing. So getting too close to the car in front, it brakes for me automatically. 
Woohoo! How cool is that? I had it, don't worry, M4. I had my foot on the brake. I'll tell you what, even with MDM, the, it, the, the, tra the traction, it just sticks so well. The, uh, the control of the car. With MDM, you're always gonna get a little bit of squiggle on the M2. In this, none. And we're at more traffic lights. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much to Tom at Cotswold BMW. Very, very thank you much um, for lending me the car. I've got to say one thing to mention. Um, I, I was in it for however many hours. The seats are very, very comfortable. They fit you in, but because you're like fixed in that position the whole time, you can't slouch. And so my back is just, I, I feel I need to stretch, but they are comfortable and I would still spec them anyway because they just look awesome. But anyway, like it, subscribe, the usual. Thank you again to the guys at Cotswold BMW and Tom. I'll see you later in the next video. Right, I realize I haven't actually answered the question, the title of the video. Would I replace my M2 competition in three years time with the new M3, M4? It's been really, really tough because I absolutely love this car. It's still my baby. I still feel like I've got a load of memories and, 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 and things to create with this car. Um, I still love it. I don't want to replace it right now. So it feels very hard to accept that I would eventually replace or, or sell this car on. But if I've slept on it, it is the next day now. I would. I would buy the new M3 M4 in three years time. If I have the need for all the extra space, etc, etc. Um, when I got back in this car afterwards, after driving it the, the whole day of the M4, the steering is her, it's so heavy. It, I always drive it in comfort, and it's the first thing I noticed driving back off the BMW 4 Court. It's so heavy. It's just, it's just effort maneuvering around. I've gotten used to it, obviously, in the whole year that I've been driving this car, um, but when I jump back straight into it, it's heavy. It's, it, it's so heavy. The dash, the interior, it suddenly felt really crap versus the M4 I was driving. The leather in the M4 was so nice. It suddenly made this look awful. And I know I commented saying that um, I'm not too bothered about dash and stuff, but you know, that's a nice, that's a nice benefit. That's a nice, nice bonus in the M4. And finally the, the, uh, the, the, the gearbox, it's so jerky. Driving that M4 has made me realize that the, the smoothness in the ZF is really nice just around town. Right now I've just been driving around and it's just like, it's so jerky. Um, it gives this car characteristic and I love this car. It's so much, it's so much character and, and, and so much of, of an event. But taking all the things of the M4, uh, the M3, the G, the G series, if they dump that into the brand new M2, it's going to be very hard to not upgrade. And so, all things considered, if I, if, if, I don't need, if, I don't, if I don't have kids or a dog, whatever, I don't need all the extra space, I probably will, 99%, I will be upgrading to the, M4, uh, the new M2. It would be really hard to say no to that. Um, but if I do need all the extra space, yeah, I'll be upgrading to the M3, M4. So, I guess, a long-winded answer to the question, yes, the G series is better than the F series. Two or three or f uh, uh, two series or three or four, just depends on how much space I need. Yes, so end of the, the, the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna leave it now, I'm gonna go away. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a super, super long one. I tried to mix it up with some drive-bys and some filming, um, but yeah, anyway. See you later in the next one. Like, subscribe, the usual.